Okay, so we will look at how to characterize surfaces which depart or deviate from black body behavior. So, yesterday we looked at some pictorial representation of IB lambda, okay, IB lambda versus lambda, and then this IB lambda. Were I B lambda versus lambda and I B versus lambda and then I B versus theta. We are looking at this spectral intensity of a black body, a grey body and a hypothetical real surface all at about 800 degrees centigrade which is which is the same as 1073 Kelvin. So, the topmost curve is a black body at 1073. So, that follows the Planck's distribution. Then there is a hypothetical surface which corresponds to curve A which is a grey body. A grey body is one in which uh, I lambda E okay watch I am using I lambda E what does that E mean emission okay. So, you can also have I lambda E R that is I lambda E reflected I lambda T R that means I lambda transmitted I lambda A B S not the A B S in cars I lambda A B S is I lambda absorbed okay. So, like that we can characterize of course this fellow is king this fellow is king denominator because he will not allow the numerator to exceed him therefore this fellow is always less than equal to 1. So, this gives you so we are already looking at a dimensionless quantity and I am putting it under the heading of emissivity. So, the formal definition of emissivity will follow before that we look at some qualitative aspects and then we will formally uh, we will formally and mathematically define emissivity right. The curve B is a real surface which has got a zigzag variation the curve is uh, jagged that means it has got a very tortuous path it is very difficult to characterize it even some of you have, some of you might have taken optimization course with me but it is very difficult to interpolate put a function and all that curve fit it is very painful. But the area under the curve, if you take the area under the curve, you can replace it by an equivalent grey body. Okay. Why do you want to do that? Grey body is a very powerful uh, engineering engineering approximation which helps you to analyze very quickly okay, and efficiently. And second, even if you have this variation, uh, we do not we do not have the competence or sometimes we are not aware of the numerical methods to handle this. Okay. So, this grey body assumption is uh, widely used in engineering practice. Right. So, this is as far as variation with respect to lambda is concerned. Now, the next thing is we have to see the variation with respect to open width. Ah. Okay. Now, look at figure 2, which gives you the directional spectral intensity okay, I lambda emission at a given wavelength temperature and azimuthal angle for a black surface, a diffuse surface, and a hypothetical real surface. Okay, there are three surfaces there. So this is the black surface. So the zenith angle is with respect to the vertical theta. So for purposes of drawing this graph, T is T one fixed, lambda equal to lambda one fixed, phi is equal to phi one fixed. So there are four parameters basically: wavelength, temperature, zenith angle, azimuthal angle. Now temperature, wavelength, azimuthal angle we fixed. We are we are studying the variation of I lambda with respect to theta only. Now, when we do that, already we said that the black body emission is independent of all the angles, so it must be independent of the zenith angle also. So, if this is the gives you the magnitude, so this gives you the magnitude of the I B lambda. So, you will get a semicircle because it is going to be con it is going to be the same for all angles. Point number one, agree. Now, next fellow comes who is below him. Okay, he is also not. This fellow also has a characteristic, as a has a <coughs> characteristic distribution, in which I lambda is not a function of theta. However, at any theta, he will have a value less than that corresponding to the black body, correct? Because black body is a king. Are you getting that point? So, this leads us to a concept of a diffuse surface.
is quite deep. Denominator I am not using theta phi, theta phi why? It does not matter, I b lambda is independent of theta phi, I do not have to use it. Okay. Now, what is the diffuse surface? I lambda e. So, for for that curve, for drawing that uh, graph or curve, these fellows are fixed, right? Only this fellow is changing. Even though this fellow is changing, denominator is fixed, this ratio is always same because both are concentric circles there. Okay. So, this is not a function of theta. Now, I can draw a curve where one more curve where instead of phi is fixed, I can put theta is fixed and say the azimuthal angle is varying. Okay. <coughs> Therefore, I should have a general case where this is not a function of theta. Correct? Do not ask me, sir, you have not shown me. I have to draw another figure 3 with the azimuthal angle. It is understood, right? Similarly, we can draw one more curve. Therefore, now if simultaneously I say if I say that the body is simultaneously grey and diffuse, then this dimensionless ratio, this emissivity, whatever, its its functional dependence on lambda, theta, phi are all knocked out. So, this dimensionless ratio, which is the emissivity, becomes a function only of temperature. And then if I do my engineering analysis, whether you want to do it using your own code or comsol or fluent or whatever, you say that I am working with a very narrow temperature range, therefore epsilon is not a function of theta, then we can go home, peace of mind that the emissivity is not a function of any variable. But so many approximations are involved in reaching that level, reaching to that stage and you must be aware of the assumptions which are, which are behind it, are you getting the point? Right, fine. Now, <coughs> Why do we use this gray diffuse approximation? It is a useful engineering approximation. Still, many engineering materials conform to this gray diffuse behavior, and it helps us do the radiative transfer calculations very fast. It, all, it also helps us to combine radiation with convection and conduction very easily. Therefore, the gray diffuse approximation is a very useful, potent, and frequently used uh, what do I say approximation in engineering practice of radiation. Okay. Now, we will formally define all the emissivities, spectral directional emissivity. Okay. The symbol for this is epsilon. Epsilon is the Greek symbol for emissivity. Epsilon lambda means it is a spectral quantity. Epsilon lambda dash means it is a directional quantity. This should be a function of, we saw all the drama in now, right? Should be a function of lambda. First lambda, after that lambda. T. Uh. Correct. Okay. So the directional spectral, the di a spectral directional emissivity. How do you define the spectral directional emissivity or directional spectral emissivity? Please use, please employ the equation numbers very carefully. <coughs> so the directional spectral emissivity given by epsilon lambda, given by epsilon lambda dash, is the ratio of the, if the ra ratio of the spectral, ratio of the spectral directional intensity of emission of a real body, of a real surface, divided by the spectral radiation intensity of a black body at that wavelength, at that temperature in the same direction, are you getting the point? So, expectedly or as expected epsilon lambda dash is a dimensionless ratio which varies between 0 and 1. 
okay therefore so it is like your cgpa out of 10 if you get 10 it's like black body so it varies between 0 and 1 it gives you a non dimensional way of telling you the efficiency of emission how efficient it is so if, if you say how efficient it is you need a benchmark you need a datum you need a standard what is the standard black body so corresponding to a black body how efficiently this fellow is emitting okay now we will have to work out this maths now therefore uh, I lambda I am just rewriting, I can call it equation 2 for a given temperature wavelength and a given direction if somebody gives me epsilon lambda dash either from theory or from experiments I can use the Planck's distribution and get the IB lambda multiply epsilon lambda dash by IB lambda and find out what is I lambda E are you getting the point this equation can be used to experimentally determine epsilon lambda dash if you want to do an experiment that means you have a complicated experiment where you have a real surface you have a black body all that so it can be used to determine epsilon lambda dash or more realistically more practically if somebody gives you epsilon lambda dash equation 2 lets you calculate i lambda e okay are you getting the point for a gray body correct huh? ah. therefore So, for a gray body this epsilon lambda dash is independent of lambda. The fact that epsilon lambda dash, the fact that epsilon lambda dash is not a function of lambda does not change the fact that it is a spectral quantity, it still is a spectral quantity. It has a value at every wavelength, unfortunately or fortunately that value is the same for all the wavelengths it is still a spectral quantity what, what do I mean by saying that it is a spectral quantity that integration with respect to lambda is not done so it is spectral if integration with lambda is not done it is called a spe, it is called spectral if integration with respect to angle is not done it is called directional okay even though you remove the functional dependence on lambda I still call it epsilon lambda dash it is still a spectral quantity okay there could be surfaces which will which need not exhibit gray body behavior for all angles okay for particular zenith and azimuthal angles it can exhibit gray body behavior in other angles it may not exhibit gray body behavior that we will have to see that depends on its nature are you getting that point in your angle of interest in your angles of interest if it is gray body behavior if it exhibits gray body behavior you are fortunate and lucky your analysis becomes easier are you getting the point okay now we will have to work on this further how do we so how does the 
epsilon lambda dash look like for a diffuse body? You can say for a grey body or for a grey surface. Not a function of huh? good theta phi. Therefore, Now, diffuse is, is, is the, with respect to angle and gray is with respect to lambda. So, for a gray diffuse body, for a gray diffuse surface, it is a function of Very powerful approximation. Pain is considerably reduced. So, you just go to a data book or somewhere, or if you have some reference, if somebody tells you aluminum oxide paint, black paint, blackboard paint, okay, wood, emissivity as a function of temperature, and somebody says confirmed it is grey diffuse, you do not have to worry how it, be, how it varies with respect to lambda, how it varies with respect to theta, and all. Okay. So, I, I reiterate the points. Why do we want to do this approximation? Because many surfaces exhibit this. Number one, number two. Even though we have sophisticated uh, database available, people, uh, many competent people are not there, or people are competent, they are not willing to do this uh, analysis. Radiate already making somebody, some student or prof work in radiation itself is difficult. Then you say that epsilon lambda, alpha lambda, rho lambda, all these are functions of theta and this thing, then you have to have quadrature in all the angles, right. You should have a Gaussian quadrature or a Monte Carlo integration with respect to theta, Monte Carlo integration with respect to phi and all this becomes very painful, becomes very challenging, okay. So, very few, so radiation is a craft, radiation is not even a science, radiation is a craft followed by very few, very few people in the world, okay. Many of them are from the Russia or Poland and those kinds of places, US some professors are there. J, uh, Jack Howell, Siegel. Have you seen the book Radiative Heat Transfer, Siegel and Howell? It is one of the references listed. U T Austin, uh, Professor J R Howell, who was also the editor for the ASMA Journal of Heat Transfer. So, India, with, there are three or four people: Professor S P Venkateshan, me, and Professor Subhash Mishra from IIT Guwahati. Only three, four people who can. We cannot say that we are experts, but we are trying to uh, do some. We are trying to do some work in radiation, gas radiation. I work on atmospheric radiation and all. So, not, not that problems are not there, enough research problems are there, but people are interested in other things. Okay. So, finally, for a diffuse gray surface, uh, epsilon lambda dash is a function of uh, T only, but now there are surfaces where this gray diffuse approximation is not valid. So, from epsilon lambda dash, we have to finally go to, we have to get rid of the lambda and you have to get rid of the dash, correct. If you have to get rid of the dash, you have to do integration with respect to theta and phi. If you want to get rid of the lambda, that is epsilon lambda, you have to do integration with respect to lambda. So, if you want to finally get the overall emissivity epsilon, which we have used in a basic heat transfer course, okay, ME317 in IIT Madras or in other courses or you have used from a data book, that epsilon is getting that epsilon is a long story. So many integrations have been done. So, we'll, you will have to do the integration with respect to lambda as well as with respect to theta and phi. Okay. So, first integration with respect to theta and leaving it, then first integrating with respect to lambda and leaving it, 
then integrating with respect to lambda and theta and getting the overall all the three definitions we will see and that completes our discussion on basic properties I mean emissivity then tomorrow's class we will use this uh, de derivations which you which we will go through in today's class and work out some problems where epsilon is a function of lambda epsilon is a function of lambda for many surfaces for example uh, epsilon should be different from alpha for which kind of surface. Suppose alpha is called the absorptivity right, we alpha s is called the solar absorptivity. So if you are interested in a solar collector the alpha s should be very high or low, you want high absorptivity but it alpha s means alpha corresponding to sun's temperature 5800 Kelvin, alpha corresponding to that but the body will get heated its temperature will be 70 or 80 degrees, huh? its body will be about 100 degrees centigrade. So when it emits it will emit according to Wien's displacement law it will emit in which portion of the spectrum yeah 2898 divided by 300 Kelvin or 300 Kelvin will be 8 or 10 micrometer. So the emissivity corresponding to the infrared must be low the absorptivity corresponding to the solar incoming radiation must be high. So if you RG that is alpha is high epsilon is low then it will start collecting it will become like a greenhouse but whereas you want exactly the opposite if you want to design. Uh, system where you want to cut out the radiation, you want the inside to be cool and so on. So sometimes you will put Garva ray sun control film, you want to cut out right, you want the solar or you want to use a double pane glass which is used in aircrafts, your uh, Shatavdi, Rajdhani and all those planes okay. So depending on the application you can play with alpha and epsilon which are functions of lambda. So these are called selective emitters, selective absorbers unless you are a stud in the spectral and directional properties of epsilon, rho, alpha you cannot be a good designer, you need to know this information. Chumma you cannot push, put some um, cellophane sheet and say that it will work out, you should know what is the transmissivity, what is the transmissivity corresponding to which portion of the spectrum and all that okay. So are getting, there is a formalism involved, you have fundas are there, you have to know the fundas okay fine. Now first, first fellows over, now we will start integrating one by one. Hemispherical spectral emissivity, yeah. mm. The hemispherical spectral emissivity is given by or we can do like this also mm. is it okay? spectral direction are getting the point this is the surface this is the surface it is at a particular temperature you are to try out you are trying to find out you are trying to find out what is the radiation emission from this surface over a hemispherical basket okay if you want to do a hemispherical basket you have to do integration with respect to theta and phi but over this hemispherical basket at each and every wavelength okay what is the overall radiation at each and every wavelength over a hemisphere that is why I knocked off theta and phi in both the anyway denominator does not matter I knocked off theta and phi in the numerator okay because I have already done the integration now what is how do you what is the number for this. 4 okay, how do you calculate the numerator? Integration theta equal to 0 to 
very good p equal to 0 to i lambda e cos theta sin theta d theta d phi correct that cos theta will come i lambda into cos theta number 5. But what is I lambda E itself? What is I lambda E itself from the direct from the definition of spectral directional emissivity? Okay, but but I lambda E is itself what? Ah. Into ah, I B lambda, very good. Now you can substitute for I lambda E into equation 5. Substituting for what is it? Uh, I lambda E. What do you get? by what no but I am already able to see some silver lining because I know I B lambda is not a function of theta and phi so it is still some manipulations are possible but before that Please look at the board. Is it clear up to this stage? Before that, what I will do is <coughs> I can substitute for E lambda in my original de definition of epsilon lambda. You may just get the feeling that uh, I am going like this, but very simple. My ultimate goal is I want to get this from this. If somebody gives me alpha epsilon lambda dash, how will I get epsilon lambda? So, I am using all the formalism involved. Are you getting the point? So, I am not going in circles actually. For the first time, you may feel that it is confusing, but actually there is a there is a logic involved in this. Fine. Deepak, any problem? Okay. Now, substituting for E lambda in equation 4. Yes, we can do this. Shall I pull out the IB lambda? I can do that. You have to do all this, huh? Okay, I I will do that. What is the relationship between I E B lambda and I B lambda? Ah. Oh. Can I cancel the I B lambda from the numerator and the denominator? Yes. What 
what is the funda in this you tell me epsilon lambda dash i will tell you epsilon lambda who will tell me epsilon lambda dash some physicists may give me some people who are otherwise jobless may do experiments they will give me epsilon lambda dash so i will use it and solve my engineering problems okay fine now uh, let us clean this up and give a nice expression for this so this is equal to 1 by pi huh please note that 1 by pi comes into Two pi epsilon uh, what is the equation number eight. eight. Okay. So eight is a powerful expression which relates a spectral directional quantity to a spectral hemispherical quantity. What is it hemispherical? we did hemispherical integration because i used uh, theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 i didn't use theta equal to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 so it is hemispherical integration because we are looking at radiation from a surface point number 1 point number 2 equation 8 is gen generic enough equation 8 is generic enough in that it can be applied to transmissivity reflectivity absorptivity and so all that so later on when we are going through absorptivity reflectivity i will quickly do this we do not have to do this integration again again this 1 by pi into double integral is gen is generic now so if you give me epsilon lambda dash either in the form of table or graph or whatever i can do the integration and get epsilon lambda from epsilon lambda i have to do one more integration i will get epsilon that is it then epsilon sigma t to the power of 4 that is it i can use the stefan boltzmann's law are you getting the point so we are going through various intermediate stages it will be curious it will be curious to find out what happens to the case of a diffuse body for a case of a diffuse body what can happen to what can happen to epsilon lambda dash what can we do with epsilon lambda dash it can be pulled out of the integral sign then this cos theta sin theta d theta d phi is basically integral d omega Pi. pi pi so that becomes so epsilon lambda is just equal to epsilon lambda dash so it is consistent with our understanding it is consistent with the formula which we uh, heuristically or which we proposed before we formally define the epsilon lambda dash okay heuristically is not the word we want any other word not empirically intuitively which you intuitively which you intuitively what did you say oh <laughs> which you axiomatically or intuitively proposed are you getting the point now we will say now we will write the story no This is consistent with your understanding. Okay, the two more things which are required. One is you integrate with respect to lambda, that is lambda equal to zero to infinity, and stay with the angle. So that is called the directional total emissivity. Then you combine these two and you do all the integrations. We will get the hemispherical total emissivity. We will do those two derivations today, and tomorrow's class is reserved for problems. Okay, I'll give you epsilon lambda versus lambda, and I ask you to please bring your f function charts to all the classes. Without the f function charts, you cannot solve problems for non-gray surfaces. Okay.
fine. Now, so now uh, directional total emissivity. What do you want to call this? Epsilon dash correct? Is it okay? So, epsilon dash the dash remains the prime denotes that it is still a directional quantity this lambda we got rid of the lambda. That is why it is total. Total means integration with respect to lambda. Hemispherical means integration with respect to angle. Okay, fine. Now, e dash of e b dash. Huh? It doesn't matter. Anyway, the E B dash is not a function of dash. Ah, it will be a. We'll do that. Uh, this thing. There's a small. The small concept involved. What is equation number? Nine. Nine. Okay. So the E B. The E B dash at a particular angle is related to the I B dash at the particular angle I B multiplied by pi will come only if you integrate with respect to what is the relation between E and pi? I must be multiplied by must be multiplied by cos theta. Okay, that is only if you integrate that cos theta sign there you will get that pi. Therefore, epsilon dash will be equal to uh, I should knock off the I can knock off the theta dependence in a short while okay now what is uh, e dash itself from oh, 10 lambda equal to 0 to infinity e lambda dash d lambda is that correct all right What am I trying to do? The approach I am following consistently is like this. I formally introduce a def please watch carefully. I formally introduce a definition of a particular emissivity. Denominator is black body, I do not work with the denominator, denominator is fixed. I keep on manipulating the numerator. Okay. How do I do? There are two ways in which I can do. Now uh, this E B dash. I am writing it as I B dash into cos theta. So, equation 10 is just a slightly different version of 9 where the E is changed to I. Now, in order to get this epsilon dash, I have to I have to link this epsilon dash to epsilon lambda dash because I know epsilon lambda dash from epsilon lambda dash I have to get epsilon dash. Okay. So, the right side I have to bring epsilon lambda dash correct. So, I have to approach it in such a way that I will get I will make use of the epsilon lambda dash that is the directional spectral emissivity. Denominator is I B I do not I, I cannot do much with the denominator. Numerator I can work with this. 
what is this numerator there was a lambda after integration the lambda vanished therefore i am just writing out this expression for this e e dash in terms of e lambda dash this e lambda dash can be written in terms of epsilon lambda dash correct that is all. So, this when you substitute everything you will get the expression. Now, we will do this carefully. See I am changing the chalk piece it is ok. So, so, what is the relationship between e lambda dash and i lambda dash cos theta very good. So, Okay, 12. But what is I lambda dash itself? What is I lambda dash itself? Is that correct? Is that correct? 13. Now, substituting for I lambda dash in 12. equal to uh, lambda equal to 0 to infinity yeah epsilon lambda dash i b lambda do not forget the cos theta so now i can substitute for capital e dash in my original definition for epsilon dash that is not equation 9 but equation equation yes yeah, say confidently i can substitute in equation equation 10 very good so substituting for e dash in equation 10 ah so Can I pull out the cos theta from the integral? Yeah. Is there a cos theta in both the numerator and denominator? Yes, sir. Can we get rid of that cos theta? Yes. So, if everybody agrees, we will pull out that cos theta. Now, so this will be nothing but into. divided by uh, correct no no dash that is fine for which one denominator uh, denominator why it cannot be lambda it's already done is it where, where is the denominator? Done equation. Done, done, done. Okay. So, what is IB? What is IB of T? What is IB of T? Ah. What is EB of T? Sigma into T power 4. What is the relationship between E and I? Therefore, I b equal to sigma t power sigma 4 t to the power of 4 by pi. By pi. Very good. Okay. This divided by correct. That is it. Therefore,
I hope it is correct. Please check me. Please check and tell me whether it is okay or we made any mistake. Now, the acid test is what happens if it is a grey surface? Hmm. If for a grey surface, So, what is integral lambda is equal to 0 to infinity i b lambda sigma t to the power of 4 by pi ok. So, it will be into 1 therefore, the formulae we derived for for the hemispherical directional emissivity and as well as for the directional total emissivity when reduced to the special case of a grey and diffuse body respectively or a diffuse and grey body respectively reduced to the cases for which we are able to intuitively guess the values of epsilon lambda dash therefore, the expressions must be correct. Therefore, these two expressions which we derived in today's class can be used to relate the fundamental emissivity of epsilon lambda dash to that quantity which is em the emissivity integrated once either with respect to angle or with respect to wavelength. In tomorrow's class first 10 minutes we will do both the integration therefore, it will be just be a triple integral therefore, you will. So, if you do the triple integral the dash also will go the lambda also will go the dash involves double integral because theta and phi the lambda involves one integral lambda is equal to 0 to infinity. So, if once all the three integrations are done the triple integral is done you get simply the emissivity the emissivity which you have used in all the courses before have come from this root epsilon lambda dash is the origin of all this that can be obtained from theory or that can also be obtained from basic experiments in heat transfer is that clear this is the way to learn radiation ok. There is a formalism involved there is no data book somebody gives you emissivity and you just put epsilon sigma t to the power of 4 and find out so many watts per meter square ok. So, we will stop with this. So, it is uh, imperative that you go through the notes and tell me if uh, there are any goodles I mean bungling anything I missed out some cos theta or sin theta something check and then tomorrow's class we will complete the other integration and you will work out problems once you work out problems it will reinforce all the concepts which we have studied. So, as you can see lambda is equal to 0 to infinity and all that is coming. So, I can have epsilon lambda different values for different lambda bands for different lambda bands if you want to calculate the fraction how will you do that you have to use the f function chart. So, please bring the f function chart and calculator tomorrow's class tomorrow 8 to 9 we will we'll work out two good problems ok. Thank you.